Greetings and welcome to our Sunday morning service at Victory Fellowship. I would like to welcome everyone who's joining us on Facebook, YouTube, and various social media platforms. We welcome you and we thank you for joining us this morning. I just want to humble myself before the leadership of uh, Victory Fellowship Church, Dr. Apostle Eric Haskins and Mom Bula Haskins. And I just want to thank as well all the pastors and elders and leadership of the house. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share the word with you. Our scripture reading for today is uh, Genesis chapter 26, verses 18 to 24, and I read, And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and found there a well of springing water, and the headmen of Gerah did strive with Isaac's headmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of the well Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and will multiply thy seed for my servants, Abraham. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the reading of the word. We thank you, Lord God, that you will enable us to share the word. I pray that, O oh Lord, you may anoint my lips of clay as I share the word. I pray that I decrease as you increase this morning. I pray that this word will touch each and every listener in this house and everyone that is following us on YouTube. Thank you, Lord, for touching the lives and blessing people in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say, Amen. I've untitled my message, There is a place called Rehoboth for you. Now, I came today with a word of encouragement. Uh, we are looking at the things that have been happening in the world for the past two years, and we find that some people are discouraged. And what I want us to understand is discouragement didn't start with us, but it started in the Bible. We realize in this scripture that we have read that Isaac... Uh, was fleeing his brother Ishmael, and there was a, a famine in the land, and he had to settle in the land of Jera. And when he settled there, he started to build, to, to redig the walls that his father had digged before. And now, when he was trying to build the, to dig these walls, uh, the Philistines were actually fighting with him. Now, I just want us, as an introduction, just to define the meaning of the word Rehoboth. What does Rehoboth mean? Rehoboth means a broad place, and it refers to the land of inheritance that only God can give and that the enemy cannot steal from you. So it is an open space. Rehoboth is a well which was dug by Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, verse 22. And this, this well is about 20 miles south of Beersheba. Isaac gave it the name Rehoboth, which means open spaces. Isaac's servants had dug two wells before Rehoboth, and the headsmen of Jera quarreled with Isaac's headmen. So when they had dug the third well, and there were no quarrels, Isaac named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. Point number three. The Philistines did not contend for Rehoboth. God kept them away. So when we say that there is a place called Rehoboth for you, we are, say, we are saying it is that place that the Lord will keep away your enemies from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when we look at Rehoboth, uh, now Isaac was digging walls. So now it means that there is a significance 
about wells in our lives. So now we want to look at what, why are wells so important? Wells are important, number one, because a well is not just about water, but it is the symbol of a thriving community. And there are things in this world that do not want communities to thrive. A world tells us of a story about our lives. In each and every one of us in our lives, we need wells. A place where we begin to thrive. Wells of water speak of places of access and supply. And these are found in the Bible. When Israel traveled to a place where God had miraculously provided water in the past, they sang, spring up, O oh well. Now, in ancient times, the well was both symbolically and often literally located at the center of the community. From the well, the community drew water, the basic sustenance for life. Metaphorically, the well represented all the social resources of the community that were necessary to endure and thrive in the community. Now, Isaac had digged the wells, and he came to a place called Rehoboth. And that place, he called it Rehoboth because he said, now God has created room for me, and I am going to be fruitful in this place. Now, we just want to look at the life of Isaac in, in, briefly. The life of Isaac was not easy after his brother Ishmael, after his father had passed on. His brother Ishmael was bitter because Abraham gave Isaac the firstborn inheritance. Then a famine came and Isaac had to move his family to Gerar, where hostile Philistines were cramming baggage in the wells that Abraham had dug. Life in Gerar was not easy. Every time Isaac would dig a new well, the Philistines would claim it and say it is theirs. In one instance, Isaac named it Isaac. Now I want us to look at the place called Isaac. Every time you want to do something in life, you always face opposition. In science, they call it inertia. And what is inertia? It is that, that force which inhibits movement in life. Now when you try to apply a force to a, an, an object that is not moving, there is resistance. And you have to keep on doing that thing until the object starts to move. So in other words, Isaac had come to a place called Isaac. He had dug a well, and the Philistines strove with him. So the place called Isaac, we find it in Genesis chapter 26, verse 20. And it reads, And the headman of Jerah did strive with Isaac's headman, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, because they strove with him. Now imagine, you have found your place in life and you are trying to make things move in your life. It could be a business. You have just started a business. You have identified a niche in the market. A niche is that specialized place, a market that many people have shunned and are, to, are not tapping into it, and you have just identified it, and you start your business. The moment you start that business, contention comes, resistance comes, people start to fight with you. So Isaac found himself in that place called Isaac. And he was trying to, to, to build his life. But the Philistines began to fight with him in that place. Many a times we find our li our, ourselves in that place of contention. In that place of competition. It is a place of serious competition. There is serious resistance coming from all angles. You find that you are trying to move and people are fighting with you. And all that they are doing, they are actually creating strategies to ensure that you don't move forward and you don't enjoy the wells that you have dug. So Isaac found himself in that place called Isaac. But beloved, one thing I like about Isaac, he did not give up at that place. He continued to dig. Now when we look at that place, it did not start with Isaac. We can even revisit the life of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 13 from verse 50, 53 to 57, we find that Jesus had preached a message. It was a powerful message in that scripture. A powerful message, full of wisdom. But what did the scribes do? The Bible says, and they were offended at him. They did not like what he was preaching. But he was doing a very good thing. But they contended with him. And what did Jesus do? He continued to preach the word. 
He did not stop there. So Isaac was in a similar predicament with what Jesus faced. He is trying to build and he finds himself in Isaac. There is resistance. But beloved, though there is resistance in our lives, what we need to understand is there is a place called Rehoboth in our lives. Hallelujah. Now what do you do when you find yourself in a place called Isaac? You need to remember these scriptures. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Another scripture. Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 2. But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And, the, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall thy flame kingly upon thee. In other words, when we are facing fierce competition in business, fear thou not. When we are facing resistance from brethren in church, fear thou not. When people are not buying into what you are trying to share, fear thou not, for your God is with you. So when you find yourself in Isaac, when you find yourself in a place of contention, in a place of serious competition, fear thou not, for God is with you. He says when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Another scripture, we read Isaiah 49 verse 25 to 26. It reads, but that says the Lord, even the captives of the Almighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. In other words, when you find yourself in a place of contention, God says, I will contend with your enemies. Hallelujah. In other words, they can come and seem to be coming with better strategies than you. But God says, fear thou not, I will contend with them. He shall take you from that place of captivity. And he says, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Now, when you find yourself in a place of contention, in a place of serious competition, remember, there is a place called Rehoboth for you. Don't give up. Continue to hold on. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57, it reads, But thanks be to God, which giveth, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, I want to assure you, there is victory for you. Even when you are in a place of contention, victory is guaranteed. Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 37, Nay in all these things, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In other words, Paul says, I know lack, I have seen lack, I have seen suffering. But one thing that I understand, I am more than a conqueror through Christ that loves me. He didn't want lack to discourage him. Lack never discouraged him. So in a place called Isaac, don't be discouraged. Continue moving on. Hallelujah. Do not quit. Do not quit. Do not throw away the towel. Proverbs 17 verse 14. It reads, The beginning of strife is when one letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it, make, it meddleth with. So, at times, it is better for you to avoid contention. You know, in, when you are in a place called Isaac, at times people come with words of discouragement. They come and discourage you. Beloved, you are trying to start something and somebody comes and says, ah, you think you are going to achieve. You know, we have seen others failing before you. But what I want to say to you, hold on to the word of God. Even when the Philistines are coming and they struggle with you and they fight with you over your well, don't give up. Just leave that well. Continue digging. Dig another one. Don't give up because at the end of the day, there is victory. Now, when we look at the life of Isaac again, he continued to dig. It wasn't easy for him. He came to a place called Sidna. He dug another well, and the Philistines strove with him again, and he called that place Sidna. And what is Sidna? Sidna is a place of enmity. Hallelujah. 
where everyone is fighting with you. Sitna is a place where everyone doesn't want to associate with you. When you are in a place called Sitna, you are in a place of loneliness. Everyone hates you. Around you, everyone doesn't want to talk to you. You are trying to be nice, but everyone hates you. So Isaac found himself in a cold place called Sitna. A place of hatred. Beloved, have you ever been in a place where you are trying to minister the word of God and what you are ministering is like bitter words to everyone? No one wants to listen to you. You are trying to do the best that you can at work. Everyone doesn't want to partner with you. Beloved, you are doing the best that you can, but everyone resists you in the workplace. They just don't like you. You are the best worker in the company. And you are believing God for a promotion. And when they want results, they come to you. A place called Sitna. You do everything that you are supposed to do. But when promotion comes, your neighbor is promoted. And you remain in the place. You remain in one place. Nothing is moving in your life. Isaac found himself in that place. He dug the first wall, they fought him. He dug the second wall, they hated him for that. But he did not give up. So, beloved, there is a place that, that is called Sitna. Before you get to Rehoboth, you pass through a place called Isaac, and you come to a place called Sitna. Now, what, how do you behave when you are in a place called Sitna? You know, this place called Sitna, Joseph found himself in that place. He dreamt, God gave him a dream. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 18 to 36, it was a powerful dream. And you know what happened after he had dreamt that dream? His brothers began to hate him. They hated him until they got to a point where they sold him. They threw him into the pit. They sold him. But Joseph continued. There was a place called Rehoboth for him. And one day he found himself being a governor in a foreign land. So, beloved, there is a place called Rehoboth for you. But you have to pass through Isaac. You pass through Sitna. Now, what do you do when you are in Sitna? I have got some scripture ingredients for us this morning that can encourage us when we find ourselves in a place called Sitna, a place of hatred. Luke chapter 1, verses 45. The Bible, the Bible reads, And blessed is, thee, is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told here from the Lord. You know, when you are in Sitna, at times you are discouraged. But I just want you to believe God that the one who has spoken to you, he will perform that which he promised you. He will do that which he has promised you. Believe, believe, believe. Our God is not man that he should lie. That which he has promised, it shall come to pass. Philippians chapter 1 verses 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Beloved, if you have started a project in your life, I want you to believe that he that started with you, he that gave you the idea, shall be with you until you achieve that which you want to achieve in life. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither a son of man that he should repent. Had this said it and not done it, or had this spoken, and shall he not make it good? He that has promised he shall make it good for you. Beloved, when you are in a place called Sitna, believe God and he will assist you. He will make sure that you will achieve that which you believe him for. Isaiah 54 verse 15. When you are in a place of hatred, a place called Sitna, beloved, people hate you. And some of them, they even partner together. They gather together to scheme against you. In a workplace, they can gather together to scheme against you. Hallelujah. To spread falsehood against you. But the Bible says in Isaiah 54 verse 15, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against me shall fall for thy sake. You need to understand that when you are in a place of hatred, when you are in a place called Sidna, they will gather together against you to ensure that you go down. But God says they shall fall. For your sake. Hallelujah. They are gathering. Not for God. But they are gathering against you. They are planning evil against you. But God says they shall fall. 
for your sake. Isaiah 54 verse 17, as I encourage you, when you are in a place of hatred, the Bible says, no weapon that is finished against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. They can plot against you. In the workspace, they are plotting against you. In ministry, they are plotting against you. You are in a place called Sitna, a place of hatred. But God says, don't give up. They that plot against you, the Bible says, no weapon finished against you shall prosper. In other words, they will not prosper. Child of God, you need to believe him for miracles. You need to believe him for wonders. Another scripture, when you find yourself in a place called Sidna, Psalm chapter 37, verse 14 to 15, the Bible reads, the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay as, as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. In other words, everyone who's plotting against you, child of God, who's hating you for no reason, the Bible says their hatred shall be broken. Their bows shall enter into their own hearts. Second Timothy 2, verse, 2 Timothy 2, verses 13. If we believe not, he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. In other words, when you are in Sitna, you get discouraged. You become faithless at times. But the Bible says, though we are faithless, our God remains faithful. Hallelujah. He will not leave us nor forsake us. So when you are in a place of hatred, our God remains faithful. He understands the situation that you are going through. First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9. Our God is faithful. Our Bible reads, our God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our God is faithful. Hallelujah. Even when you are discouraged, he is faithful. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Beloved, there is a place called Rehoboth for us. It is a broad place that God wants us to enter in. But before you get to Rehoboth, there is Sitna. There is Isaac. But when you go through that, do not give up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not give up. I know that most of us have been in those places. At times we have gone through difficult situations in life. You have started a business. It seems as though the business is not moving. You have started a ministry. It seems as though the ministry is not moving. Hallelujah. But there are people who come to you and begin to utter words of discouragement. But you need to encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible says one day David came back from war and he found his family. Everyone had been taken away. And the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. I just came to encourage you, beloved, this morning, that you have gone through a lot of things. Probably you have lost everything during the time of COVID. It hasn't been easy. Some people lost their jobs during COVID. It is a place called Sitna and Isaac for you. But you don't have to be discouraged. Our God is faithful. He will take you to a place called Rehoboth. You need to continue digging the walls. In Genesis 26 verse 22, And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the Lord. Now, it is when Isaac got to that place called Rehoboth that God appeared to him. God began to speak to him. It reminds me of Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 18 when Abraham separated himself from Lot. Hallelujah. We remember that when he was walking with Lot, there was strife. Hallelujah. And there was not enough for their, for their cattle. But the Bible says, the Lord appeared to Abraham that day when he was separated from Lot. Beloved, there is a place called Rehoboth for you. Hallelujah. Now, when, when, when Isaac got to that place called Rehoboth, the Bible says, and God appeared to Isaac and he reconfirmed to him the promise that he had given his father. And the Lord said unto him in verse 24 of Genesis chapter 26, I am the Lord God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you. 
and I will multiply your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. You know, in that place called Rehoboth, beloved, it is a place of blessing. It is a place of flourishing. It is a place that God has prepared for you and I. But it's not going to be easy for you to get to that place. You need to continue digging the holes. You need to continue digging. Don't give up because that place, it exists in your life. It exists in my life. It exists in your life. You need to continue pressing on. Continue push, pushing on. So now what are the implications for our lives? Hallelujah. In other words, we need to, point number one, we must keep walking by faith when we want to get to that place called Rehoboth, even when we feel trapped in Philistine territory, even when there are enemies fighting us, we must keep walking by faith. Beloved, I just want us to encourage us this morning, continue walking by faith. Hallelujah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know, when you, are, you have faith in your life, it is difficult. Because things are not moving, but you are believing God for something. Even when everyone is turned against you, you are believing God for something. Hallelujah. Because you know and understand that there is a place called Rehoboth for you. A place of fruitfulness. Hallelujah. And number two, how do you get to a place called Rehoboth? You must keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. Point number three, you must go over that next hill. Beloved, there are mountains. The place called Isaac and Sitna, it is a mountain, hallelujah. But one thing that I like is when you find yourself in a mountain, speak to the mountains, hallelujah. We have a gift of God. The Bible says whatsoever we say, hallelujah, and we have faith in God, we have power to move mountains, hallelujah. That gift is inherent in every believer. You begin to speak to every mountain. The Bible says when we begin to speak to mountains, they begin to move. Even when your business is not moving, you speak to the business and say, your business, I command you to begin to have fruit in the name of Jesus. And when you do that, you are creating an atmosphere and the atmosphere begins become pregnant with the word of God and things begin to move and you get to that place called Rehoboth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Beloved, I love that place called Rehoboth in my life. Rehoboth is a place of rest. In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. He is faithful to that which he has promised. Hallelujah. Faith, faith, it is a subject on its own. But when you believe God, you do not have to waver. You know, there are so many people who are believing God for something, but they begin to say, but, can God do this for me? The moment you say, but, that's you, it means it cancels your faith. You are starting to waver, and you will not get to a place called Rehoboth. So stubborn faith is when you believe God, and you are saying to myself, this thing that I believe God for, it is about God. Nothing else but God. I am not going to move from this I will believe God and I believe that he will take me to that place called Rehoboth. How do you get to that place called Rehoboth? Don't give up on prayer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, and men ought always to pray and not faint. Beloved, our currency is our knees. Our currency is prayer. When you find yourself in Isaac, when you find yourself in Sitna, you must continue sending vapor to heavens and something will give in the spirit. As you continue sending vapor, you get to a place of breakthrough. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Beloved, there is a place called Rehoboth for us. Hallelujah. Maybe just before I close, I just want to give a testimony about my life. Hallelujah. I remember... Uh, in 2015, I was retrenched from my job and I found myself without a job. Then I started a business. When it started, the business seemed to be moving. But I went to a place called Isaac. Hallelujah. A place of condition. You know, when you start something and you identify a niche market, maybe for the first few months, 
you'll be alone in that place. And you think that everything is well with you. But the fact that you are doing something good, people begin to copy you. And when they copy you, they copy your strategy and they perfect it. And they, they do it better than you. And everyone is fighting against you. And if you are not careful, you find yourself losing. I remember at some point, I lost all the capital that I had. And at some point, people would come to me and say, my brother, why don't you look for a job? I think this thing of yours is not working. You know, you are educated, you've got certificates. Look for a job. But beloved, I remember, I sustained my workers with the savings that I had for about six months. I was in my place called Isaac. I was in my place called Sidna. You know, the customers that I used to serve, they shunned me. They ran away from me. One day I was phoning one of my best clients, and as I phoned that client, he says to me, Mr. Angume, please don't call me. I'm no longer doing that business. I am now out of that business. So, beloved, I was in a place called Sidna, a place of hatred. I was doing everything in the best of my ability and knowledge, but things were not moving. But one thing that I did, I continued to, to believe God for a breakthrough. And I remember in 2018, I received a prophetic word. And the prophet who prophesied on me, it was a Sunday service at Victory Fellowship. He said, my brother, you are in a place called the Valley of Dry Bones. Hallelujah. I want you to continue to prophesy to the dry bones. And God is going to build your life. One day I took my title deeds. I went to a, to a bank. I wanted a loan. And when I was there, the Holy Spirit said to me, do not apply for the loan. I was obedient to the Holy Spirit. And when we went back with my wife, God sent divine helpers. So, beloved, when you are in Sita, Sitna and you are in Isaac, at times you may give up, but there is a place called Rehoboth for you. Hallelujah. Now I can be rest assured and say, I have entered into my Rehoboth. So I came to encourage somebody who wants to give up in life, somebody who's seeing things working against them. Beloved, there is a place called Rehoboth for you. There is a place called Rehoboth for you. Our God is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Let us pray. I know that somebody out there may be discouraged. Someone in our church may be discouraged. Those following us on YouTube and Facebook, probably you are going through a difficult time. Hallelujah. I just want to assure you, our God is faithful. I just want to pray for you this morning. Hallelujah. And I want you to believe that God can change your life. God can transform your life. And you'll enter into that place called Rehoboth. Because it is there. Do not give up. Do not take away your life. That place exists for you. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone who's been following us, following this message this morning. Father, how I pray that you may touch their lives, O oh God. Some of them, Lord, have lost their jobs. Some of them have lost their beloved. Some of them have lost their savings. Some of them, they have lost everything. Some have, have had their house repossessed because they failed to pay their mortgages. But Father, I pray that, my God, you may take them to that place called Rehoboth. My God, a place of fruitfulness. My God, that place is found in you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you may touch their lives, touch their hearts, transform them this morning. Father, I pray for breakthrough over their lives. Father, we decree and pronounce a breakthrough. Send them divine helpers, Lord. Change their life stories. Father, we speak to businesses that have gone down. Some of them that are in the verge of collapsing. Father, we speak to them. Breathe the breath of life over their lives, O oh God. We speak to those, O oh God, that, found them, that find themselves lying on the bed and they are sick. Father, we declare recovery. We speak good health. Take them to that place of victory, a place of rest. Father, you say in your word, there remain it therefore a rest for the people of God. Heavenly Father, how I pray this morning that you may take your people to a place of rest, a place of Rehoboth, 
a place where you have created room for them, a place of fruitfulness. We thank you for fruits in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. May God richly bless you as you enter your real birth in this season. Amen. I thank you.